Amitabh Bachchan angle has come out very prominently in the revelation of Sten Lindstrom to you, Chitra. Now, he says that the investigators from India gave him a long list of, a list of names to pursue, in, including the name of Amitabh Bachchan. They also told me they did not trust you entirely. That is you, Chitra Subramaniam. They didn't trust you entirely because you had refused to link the Bachans to the kickbacks. Now, and eventually they ended up planting the Bachan angle on a foreign newspaper. My question to you is, I think in national interest today, Chitra, it is important that you talk about and you tell us who was trying to plant the Bachan angle. Is it true that there was an attempt to plant Amitabh Bachchan's name on you as a reporter at that time that you resisted or didn't play into their hands. Can you tell us details of it? Because, you know, there's a lot of interest into why this was happening. Okay. Um, there, there were two things that happened um, when the government changed, and they were diversionary. And they disturbed the investigation and the sanctity of the investigation. One was to go around saying that uh, a former prime minister had bought some dud guns and the guns were bad. So, you know, a whole lot of people went off to see them firing in, in cold and heat. And, you know, it was a complete uh, drama and waste of money, despite everybody saying the guns were good. People with knowledge, you know, the army people across the world were saying we had bought excellent guns. But in the din of what was created, that was lost. Um, the Bachchan story, in, you know, just look at the chronology. Um, till the government changed, uh, there was no uh, talk of the, of the uh, involvement of the Bachchans. And it was a straight story. It was, it, you know, they were, it was followed step by step. Everything was going fine. And uh, then this uh, list appeared. And then you, you'd recall this famous thing about the sixth account. Uh, all of us who are working, including Mr. Lindstrom, and in one of his interviews, he said that, you know, he had informal sources in, in Switzerland. I was part of his informal sources simply because the story was going faster than the investigations. Um, you know, then we had to deal with the sixth account. And then on top of that came a name uh, of Mr. Butchen. I mean, you realize that any reporter, I, I was a reporter then, I followed this. Uh, and I said, where is the evidence? And the story was that there is evidence uh, in India. And therefore, uh, you know, one should just add this like some kind of a nursery rhyme uh, to the uh, serious body of investigation. Uh, I was under pressure to carry that name. Um, and then when I refused, uh, it was planted elsewhere, including in India. Chitra, I, I respect, you know, your right to uh, not reveal more than you want to now, but I would press you a little bit more. And I'm, I'm asking you again, because this is extremely serious. Are you saying that Indian investigators came to you as a reporter and tried to put a story onto you about Amitabh Bachchan's being linked to Bofors? They tried to do that? Yes. Yes. I want, I want to know more. Our viewers want to know more on how it happened. I have not, I, I have moved, I'm not a journalist anymore. I haven't written for the last 20 years, 15 years. Um, I am willing to share this information if I am under oath in a proper investigation. I do not believe that this kind of information has to be shared in a television interview because that is not our role. This is, you know, we cannot just go on saying, but yes, it was planted. It was a planted story. Not only on me, but on others. And, and you are saying, Chitra, that if the government uh, today asks you to come forward with the information and says that we, under oath, you can, if you can share the information with us, that we can follow it up further, we can investigate further in the interest of truth coming out even more than two decades later, then you will be willing to cooperate this, with them the, and give them the leads. But there's a simpler way of doing this, Arnov, isn't it? I mean, let's look at some you know, good journalistic work. Let's look at the newspaper in Sweden on whom uh, the story was planted. Why don't we just ring them and ask what happened? 
you know, the people, the journalists who suffered because of this, their reputations, why don't we ask them what happened? Who planted the story? And you could then get a journalistic story without having to go into any investigation. Were you being fed false information? Now, I'd like to say that as a clarification because, Chitra, you make that point. The newspaper you mentioned, we have at times now contacted that newspaper. We have contacted the journalist. And I want to place on record that we have been told that the journalist might choose to speak to us in a couple of hours. So I'm waiting to, for that. I'm waiting to hear that. And, and, and I take your guidance on how to follow the story. Uh, now, the, now the, the, the important thing here is to know whether there was an attempt by Indian investigators to mislead not just Ted Lindstrom, but to mislead you as well. You know, um, with hindsight, you can always say, oh, uh, that was a... I, I think when you're working as a journalist, um, there is no mislead. Everything is a lead. Um, so you follow everything seriously till you realize that maybe this is a blank wall and that's barking up the wrong tree. Um, sort of, you know, so I don't think as a reporter you can, you can uh, uh, um, discard any, any information that comes your way. So, um, I mean, yes, there were, there were efforts to mislead, but it's not as if, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. What impact do you think the new revelations that Sten Lindstrom has come out with will have? And for all the cynics out there, because Chitra, there are a fair amount of cynics out there who'd rather like to see this die. And you know, that is the fact. My question to you is for all the cynics out there who have been saying, what's the big deal? What's new about this? Could you tell our viewers what is new? Reiterate rather for our viewers what is new, substantially new, and what needs to be followed in what Sten Lindstrom has told you in that interview. Um, yeah, I'm glad you've asked this question because, you know, when you say, and there are cynics out there, and, you know, say, oh, it's only 64 crores, or oh, it's only 100,000 crores, or 65, you know, whatever numbers of zeros you want to add. Uh, uh, what is, what is uh, important is that here is an opportunity for us to make a course correction to understand w what happened, uh, how we as a, as a media uh, have grown or not grown, how have our institutions grown or not grown, uh, and what does it mean to all of us? You know, politicians come and go, all of us will be gone, but what are we leaving behind? You know, I mean, this is not some kind kind of a movie where you, uh, where you, uh, um, you know, show um, interesting things one minute and then go on and people get bored. This had very serious issues to raise, Chitra, and they remain unanswered. Ch Chitra, uh, uh, the cynics also ask, why is Ted Lindstrom speaking now? Yeah, I mean, he could have spoken, A, it's the 25th anniversary. He could have spoken last year, they would say the same thing. When he was speaking as Stan Lindstrom, the chief of police, people said, why is he speaking now? You can always ask that, you know, and you can ask that 10 years from now or 15 years before. But I think you have to uh, move beyond that. We as a nation have to move beyond that because some harm was done and we have to see who did the harm. And if we did it, let us correct it. Now, also they say that, you know, the matter has been dealt with by the courts. Nothing more can be done. So you can keep going on about it, but nothing's going to happen because it's been dealt with in the courts. Fine. If that is the view that if that is the view of India as a nation, then that is the view of India as a nation, and everybody will draw their own conclusions. But as uh, Mr. Lindstrom said, uh, you know, when every time the the, the thing bleeds a bit, uh, the wound is there. He gave me a very interesting example, uh, uh, and this was again ten years ago or fifteen years ago, and he said it's like you know you are sitting around a lake. Uh, at the bottom of a lake uh, is a poisonous dragon that's dirtying our water. And that he meant all of us meaning the world. And he said, we have to put one stone at a time. I can put in a boulder, you can put in a stone, someone puts in a pebble. 
so that the dragon then just comes out to breathe. And we have to hold our horses to kill the dragon if and when it comes out. It may not happen in our lifetime, but we have to not, we can't stop trying. Uh, and I think there was some merit in what he was saying. And I'd like to say this now, because I have just received a text message as we speak that we tried to speak to Bo Anderson, who's the journalist who's been following that story. I don't know if that is the particular story which Mr. Bachchan was referred to in, but he has refused to reveal his sources two times now. He has refused of officially, he has communicated to my team right now, this second, that I will not reveal who Me tried to plant an Amitabh Bachchan name in my story. And I think we respect his right to do it, but we must continue to ask that question because the fact it doesn't take away from the fact there was an attempt. If, if the attempt happened in the case of Amitabh Bachchan as one diversionary tactic, I'm sure there were other diversionary tactics as well. So the big story this evening can and I, Chitra Subramani. Yes, Chitra, I have one, one point. Can I? Yeah, go on. Sorry. Sure. You know, um, um, I have worked closely with Boo. And I know, I know how difficult it was for him. He's one of the world's best investigative journalists. And I'm saying that it's not just Sweden. He's, a, he's an institution. And for him, uh, 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 I know what he went through. And I respect his view to not reveal uh, the sources. But that doesn't mean we should stop. And you're right on that. And finally, towards the end of your interview, uh, Lindstrom says, and this is so ironical, isn't it? He says that whenever the public prosecutor and I heard of any Indian investigators or any other Indian visits to Stockholm, we would speak to the media telling us we want to meet the Indian investigators. Yeah. And he goes on to say, can yeah. you imagine yeah. a situation? And this question he yeah. puts to, I think this question is not a rhetorical question, but anyone in India needs to follow this question and think about it. Can you imagine a situation where no one from India met the real investigators of the gun deal? But did we know this so far? Chitra? I think, um, yes. Well, people in the know knew. But I think the fact that he says it, the whole ridiculousness of the situation, here are these two guys saying, come to our office. We have recordings of all the interrogations. Help us put the names together. We can help you put the names together. And let us work together. And nobody came. Absolutely. Well, I I'll tell you one thing, Chitra. The, the story needs to come out. Uh, we need to know who those sources were. We need to know who put whom on the wrong track. We need to know who tried to plant the story. We also need to know whether there was a cover-up. And I think that is a story which will be followed. But Chitra Subramaniam, you know, for, for, for this great scoop, and I'd like to place on record, which came out in the Hoot website. And uh, we're, we're talking to Chitra Subramaniam about it today. Congratulations on that scoop. And uh, don't say you're not a journalist, because you are one of the foremost journalists this country has had. Thank you very much for talking Thank to me. Thank you from Geneva Thank today. Thank you, Thank Chitra. You.